Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it is one o'clock on Thursday, which means it is time for a YouTube video. All right, I'm going to make sure that I am actually transmittalating. It looks like it. Oh, I see my hands moving. That's scary, but good. So anyway, here is our card. We're going to do a fun fold, and it's one that if you guys follow Split Coast Stampers, you probably saw it was one of the tutorials this week, but I did a little bit of modification, um, just a little bit, not much, and I used the ladybug again. I know, I just used the ladybug, and I'm sorry, but not really sorry, because I really I love it. But this time, I've turned it into a bumblebee, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But here's how the card works. It pops open like this, and you have a sentiment right there in the middle. You can see this has kind of popped up a little bit, and then it opens, and you've got this center centerpiece coming with it. All right, so it's really pretty easy. I've got all of the measurements for you. They'll all be on tomorrow's blog, so not to worry. And then the happy and heartfelt, this is kind of an interesting story. I actually lost this stamp set for about an hour and a half. I was looking all over for it. I could not figure out how in the world I could lose a stamp set. I could see losing a stamp. I could see losing a die. Hey, Linda. I could see losing a lot of things, but an entire stamp set didn't make any sense. So no matter how many times I scanned my shelf, I couldn't find it until finally I did, and it was exactly right where I, it shouldn't have been. I momentarily forgot how to alphabetize, apparently. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. And we're going, I've got some stuff already cut and some things already glued. So we're going to start with a five and a half by eight and a half piece of Very Vanilla. And we're going to use our score tool here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to score at two and one eighth. I'm gonna use my the large size. I have kind of a ham fist, so I use the large size all the time. Two and an eighth, and then four and one quarter. And then we'll be pretty well done with this, so we can set it aside. All right, let's see how we're doing here. Make sure I'm actually out and about, okay. All right, so now, one thing I have I try to tell you guys, if I don't tell you, then I should tell you more, is when you're doing a fun fold, take the time to make sure that you actually get the folds straight. It seems like it ought to be counterintuitive because, oh, well, you know, I'll, always things, you know, you always, you always score straight and everything is straight, but it just doesn't work that way. So take the time to make it straight. All right, so I have some of the Daffodil Afternoon. Hi guys, appreciate y'all joining. Hi Julianne and Marsha and Karen and Pam and Jenna Marie, appreciate it. And Micheline from Kentucky, hello. All right, now I'm just gonna apologize up front, but know that deep in my heart, I don't mean the apology because I love the Daffodil Afternoon DSP. It has a limited lifespan for me and I'm gonna, my goal is to use as much of it as I can. So you're gonna see it a lot. <laughs> Hi Glenda, hi Rosie. So I've cut two of the pieces. I, I know you know this this particular design. And I did try to cut them so that I could put them back together, sort of like, you know, together, because they're going to go here. Oh no, 32 is really cold. They're going to go like this, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead. I've, uh, I've matted them on basic black, okay? I do love the black background of this paper so very much. I do, I do. Some people don't like it, but I actually love it. I think it is a beautiful and beautiful. It's beautifuler and beautifuler every time I see it. And I love it with the very vanilla. I think a lot of times we want black to go with white, but I really like it how it looks with the vanilla, don't you? Okay, so these two pieces are just pretty basic panels, like so. Okay, all right. Now, we've got the insides. Let me show you how the insides work. What you have here is we have two pieces, two squares of black. They're two inches by two inches, so one square and the second square that I'm going to cut into triangles. And then I have a one and three quarter by one and three quarter square of the DSP that we're going to cut into two triangles, okay? But that one's going to be one. If, if this spooks you when I get done talking about it, then use a design that doesn't have a discernible up and down, and then it won't matter, right? But since I have a discernible, very discernible, discernible up and down, then uh, we're going to make sure that we get this right. So let me get my trimmer out. Here's my, my dispas. Here's my dispas. And here's my mats. 
So let me just, I'm gonna say this about that and that about this. This, if I was putting these together like so, that would not be right, right? For At least not for me. Usually I have a 1 8 inch border. This one is a quarter. So this is 1 and 7 8 um, or no, it's 2 inches by 2 inches for the mat and 1 and 3 quarters by 1 and 3 quarters. If I was just matting them like this, it would be 2 by 2 and then 1 and 7 8 But because I'm turning it into triangles and I want it to mat with the same look, then I drop a whole quarter inch between the mat and the DSP. Does that make sense? So two by two and one and three quarters by one and three quarters. Now here's the other piece. We're gonna need both of these pieces cut correctly, so hold your breath that I can do it right, in order to have the right shape triangles for, for my cart. So first we're going to cut the triangles out of the squares of the mats. And all you gotta do is stick the point right in the channel, top and bottom, and give it a cut. And then what I did is I went like this so that I would know what was going where. Okay, so we're gonna do it again. Hey, Debbie, appreciate you joining. Hi, Bree. Thank you, Brenda. I'm, I'm glad that you love this because it is way too fun. And I think it's cool that you could make the bumblebee out of the ladybug. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut my first DSP square, same, direct, same way, just put the points in and cut it. Now, what you see here is that we got this triangle and we got this triangle, right? So now I need this triangle to be like that with the hearts, you know, right side up. So I want to go, I want to cut from this corner to this corner, all right? Does that make sense? So it's the other corner to corner than the first one was. Again, if that spooks you, do your first one of these cards with a non-directional DSP, and then you won't have to worry about it, okay? But there we go, we managed to get our four triangles. Whew. That was a relief. So now let me go ahead and quickly adhere these. Hey Angie, thank you. I hope you like it. I did get the idea from Split Coast Stampers, the lady's name that I cannot for the life of me remember right now, but I will put that in my blog tomorrow so you'll know. She did a real cute one with the um, otters from the from the celebration. Oh, come on now. Don't make me cut another one just because I'm busy yakking instead of straightening. There we go. Phew, that was close. That could have been bad. All right. Now you're welcome to use whatever adhesive you like here, but you know me, I like glue and I like it because of what I just did. It was a whole lot easier to pick that up. <laughs> and fix it than it would have been if I had used stamp and seal. Okay. All right, and just keep that back together so that we know that things are progressing apace. I am really having trouble getting that straight, but it's gonna have to be good enough. Here, I'll try to do better on these two. Hey, Betty. Hi, Nicole. From Paris, like in Paris, France. I appreciate you joining, my goodness. Thank you. Ooh. I, had lo I almost lost it. Well, I did actually lose it. Yeah, I could not believe that stamp set. I looked for like an hour. It was crazy. And it, I mean, it was right there. And I will, I, it, is, it is true. I actually, when I was looking for it, I was looking at every single title. But for some reason, my head went right over the top of it. I don't know how many times and didn't see it. I, I was like, I've lost a stamp. I, I almost ordered it again because uh, it's really cool. And that would have been so goofy. Okay, so there we have our four pieces. Now these go on the back of the card base, like so. And we're gonna use our highly calibrated Mark I eyeball to put these on. Really all we're doing is kind of eyeballing that the, the space between the mats and the end of the card is the same as it is on the other panels. It's really basically the normal look. So whatever is normal for you, that's that's what we're gonna do again, okay? So it's gonna be just like that. 
and one more time. I know it's like watching some mint dry. I know, I'm sorry. Gluing is, it's one of those things. You have to glue. At some point, you have to adhere stuff to the card. And I could do a lot of it ahead of time, but this is a lot of the card. So it seemed like a good idea to show it to you. Once we get done with this, I'll go ahead and make the B because that's fun. That's a lot more fun than this. Okay, I'm gonna just give that a little eyeball there. Okay, I had to stand up so that I could actually see what I was doing. Alrighty, here we go. Oh, did you see that jumping around like crazy, like some crazy thing? Crazy. And the last one. And then we'll make a B. You guys ready to make a B? To make a B? We're gonna make a B. Now in reality, only God can make a B. But I'm gonna make a, a fake B. A paper B. I'm gonna make a B out of paper. All right. Okay, so let's set that aside so it can think about what it's done. And here I have a whole bunch of die cuts and punches. And we're going to do a little bit of, a little bit with all of them. Yes. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I need to tell you that the product list for this one is going to look like a lot because you got a couple of punches extra. Okay, but a lot of it, I think, is stuff that you're going to have in your stash. Okay, so I have here a ladybug body out of basic black. And then I made three little strips. They're like a quarter of an inch wide. And this is more of the daffodil DSP, right? So it's all the same DSP, just different designs in it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay these across this little bee guy like this. And then I'm going to trim the edges. And et voila, he is going to become a bee. He's going to go from a being a ladybug to being a bee buzzer. All still good. Hello from Bradenton, Florida. Bradenton, Florida is very near Black Prong Equestrian Center, where I have spent a few horse shows. Beautiful place. I'm going to say the name wrong, but the Gothi, Goth Forest, Gothi Forest, G-O-E-T-H-E. We drove our horses through there, and it was lovely little bit sandy and it was in a it was in february so my girl was covered in winter fur and it was not cool enough there for that so we had to do a very fast and i'm not gonna lie it wasn't good clipping job so that she could make her she could make it in the marathon that day because it was way too hot okay now in theory in theory, you could stick this back into the punch and cut those strips. But you know me, I'm a fussy cutter from way back, and so I'm just going to trim it. And I really actually think that's easier, okay? Because by the time you get that all wiggled around, I am pretty certain I'd screw up and cut off an antenna and have to start over. So I'm just going to trim this with my scissors. <clears throat> just like that. My goodness, she's turning into a bee at, in front of our very eyes. Speaking of bees, I've gotten, I've been getting the seed catalogs. I pulled out my seed starting trays. I'm going to get them Cloroxed and get all ready. In about February, we'll start seeds inside. My favorite time of year. What to get, what to get, what to grow. All right, now. I made her wings with some pale papaya shimmer vellum. And what I did is I, I punched them with the punch, the wing punch, and then I ran it through the leafy greenery embossing folder. Okay, so can you see that it's got some texture to it in addition to the, the shininess? So what I'm gonna do before I adhere them, yes, for fuzzy cutting, exactly. Ah, Paris, France, how nice. I'll bet everybody says that when you say that, huh? And you're like, it's it's where I live, okay? It's just, it is what it is. It's just where I live. So I've just curled them a little bit, like so. And then I'm going to take a little bit of adhesive foam strip. Now, interestingly, this foam strip is from the 
most recent. This is from the Light the Candles kit. So if you get the Light the Candles kit, with all the birthday cards in it, you can make all of the cards and still have a whole, like a third of a sheet of little foam strips left over. So what I did is I took that. If you don't have this, you could use just regular foam strip. I just took a little piece like that long. Let's call that a half an inch. And I put that right at the top of the winga right at the top of the winga, where you can't see it. That's kind of a cool thing about embossing the shimmer vellum. It really hides dimensionals pretty well, actually. And then I'm gonna stick this right at the top of her little body. And now this little ladybug became a little bee. Oh my gosh, how cute that, okay. Here, we're gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna go ahead and put a basic, a classic matte dot in black. Do you live in an equestrian neighborhood? Our horses are in our garage. Yes, probably about a thousand of them. <laughs> it's very horsey down there, that is for sure. All right, and there is, I don't know what that is, but it's a little bee dot. It's a little bee wing dot. You know how you have a wing nut? Well, that's a wing dot. Okay, all right, so let's set him aside and let's see where we're at. Okay, now, now, we're gonna have another couple of pieces. I've got a black square and we're going to adhere it to the middle. This is gonna be the mat. Thank you, Marsha. It's gonna be our mat on our inside. And I'm just kind of centering it, right? So you can see I'm not even measuring. I'm just kind of centering it as a diamond. Let me go ahead and adhere, and adhere. <laughs> Let me go ahead and stamp my sentiment. Remember, think diamonds while you're doing this. Think diamonds. Now, one might ask, where is one's stamp? Oh, it's in here, okay. Well, let me pull out. I didn't, I'm gonna pull out. We need to celebrate this. And I believe that is all. Oh wait, no, I'm gonna use congratulations on the front. Okay, wait a minute. Not that, that's not it. If I would just pay attention, I could turn it over and see right through there. Where are you, congratulations? There you are. Okay, so there we go. Let me put these back. Let me put these back. <laughs> that one's boggling. It's like, no, you can't put me back. You have to keep me out forever. You must keep me out forever. Okay, here we go. Aw, thank you, dear. Appreciate that, Angie. Okay, so we're gonna use congratulations here in a second, so let me put him on a block. Usually I keep these out. I don't know why I was so, um, I don't know. Usually I'm not quite so tidy. I don't usually put things away that well. <laughs> All right, so at Evening Evergreen, and because this is a not see-through stamp, i.e. a clear stamp, I'm gonna give it one little stamp to be sure it's straight like I want. Then I'm gonna go back to diamond, diamond. Diamonds in the sky, is that it? No, diamonds. Something's in the sky. What is that song? Islands in the sky, there we go, gosh. All right, we'll get this stamped on here. This is Evening Evergreen again. Okay, parfait, it's parfait. Hi, Woos Creations. And then we'll get this back and get it adhered to the front. And then we're gonna play with the front and the mechanism. Thank you, Rosie. Definitely look at Thunderbolt peppers and Sweet Success cucumbers. Ooh, nice. Yeah, we don't eat a lot of cucumbers. And I don't do a lot of pickling, mostly because I like sweet pickles and Wayne doesn't like sweet pickles. And so it's kind of a, there's not much point in me doing that, but I, we do like chard. And I've been looking at um, a cool squash called Cube of Butter that it comes from territorial seed that I have been wanting to, to make and make grow, so that's what my plan is for this year. Okay, you can see how we're progressing, right? Now, the front decoration, 
are these two pieces of, yes, Daffodil Afternoon DSP adhered to, and let's see, I'm gonna go like this with it. That makes me happier. Adhered to some more basic black. And basically, all I'm gonna do is adhere them like that to the card front, okay? The first thing we're gonna do though is make this part right here that does the popping up of our B. Now, I like it, I guess it comes from way back when I did cross stitch and things like that. I like open and closed to look finished. So I measured and made sure that when I cut this little tip off, that it would be just about exactly the same here so that it would match up and, and be tidy as opposed to ending right in the middle of those flowers like that. But that's just me, you do you. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're going to take, this is a, you see I said I wasn't gonna say it, but I am gonna say it. This is one and, no, this is two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths, okay? And what I'm gonna do is first with the score tool, I'm going to score down the diagonal. Okay, and then I'm gonna put that score line at the one and seven eighths inch mark. Okay, like that. And I'm just gonna cut off that little tip. Not with the score tool, I've gotta to use the cut tool. Okay, so it just cuts off the very little tippy tip tip. The little tippy tip tip. Do you both happen to like bread and butter pickles? I, Wayne is not a sweet pickle guy at all. I don't know why, I just think it's weird. I love bread and butter pickles, my personal self. Okay, now to make this, you can see that you're going to fold it so that you have a mountain fold with the cut piece to the, to the right. Okay, so we're gonna fold it like that. Again, make sure it's kind of straight. And then we're going to take, gosh, I should have done this, sorry. We've got my um, pretty plaid. Is this not the prettiest plaid ever? Pale papaya and flirty flamingo on very vanilla. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take that for a thousand, Alex. I can't even believe Alex Trebek is gone. That was some random association right there. Mm-hmm, that was random association. All righty, here we go. Lucy in the sky with diamonds, correct. Somebody told me once, and I didn't know this, but I, I was told that that was a reference to LSD. Is that true, Lucy in the sky with diamonds? I, I don't know. Somebody told me that a long time ago because I was like rocking that song. You know me, I was a real, I was a real rocker when I was growing up, <laughs> by which I mean not at all. Um, and what you want to do on this piece is you want these edges to look right. It's probably going to be a little closer to the score line than you would normally do, but that's okay because we're hiding this with the mechanism. Okay, now let me show you how to do this. Lay this square with the square on the back of the card. Got it so far? Hold with your left fore front this thing, the pointer finger. Take your liquid glue and put a little bitty bit around the edges. Do kind of get kind of close to your, your score line, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then fold this over like so. And then you can open it and give it a little rub. Now everybody hold your breath because in theory this worked. Picture that his son Julian drew of a classmate named Lucy. Ah, see, urban legends. I don't know. So you can see that it's a little bit, I would have liked it to be a little bit more, but it's okay, I'll take it. I think it's fine. Okay, so there's that. And what's gonna happen now is we're gonna decorate these two little guys with some daisies. And then we're going to adhere our bumblebee on last. All right, let's make some daisies. I have the, used the medium daisy punch, and I cut two with very vanilla and two with the same pale papaya vellum, shimmer vellum, 
and I'm just going to adhere them like so. Do you see that exactly perfect amount of time to hold those two things together? Mm -hmm. All righty. There we go. Okay. Now while we're playing with this, I'm going to go ahead and color my dots. I've got a couple of opal rounds from the annual catalog and I'm taking my dark pale papaya blend and I'm gonna color two of the large ones. I mean, it's not gonna be really, really dark, but it's gonna be a little dark. And this works, You, it doesn't work with Stampin' Right markers, but it does work with the alcohol ink in the blends. But you do wanna give it just a few seconds to dry before you pick it up. And I have also used the Sprig Punch. I told you there was a lot of things, but my theory sometimes is if you've got it in your stash, why have it in your stash if you're never gonna use it? So what I did is I cut two sprigs in Evening Evergreen and two sprigs in Pear Pizzazz. And each one of these squares is going to get a Pear Pizzazz and a Evening Evergreen leaf and a daisy, like so. And then the other one, look at this. This is a design must, so don't, don't mess this up. If you case this, be sure. See how I'm gonna put the pear pizzazz on top of the evening evergreen? Watch, evening evergreen on top of pear pizzazz. Yeah, I know. It's just those little things that make you go, oh my gosh, oh, that Mary, she's all left brain and stuff. It's crazy. And I'm gonna put these like so. Okay, so that's how they're going to go. And now I'm gonna pick them up off of the card because that means I don't have to hold everything down. Okay, pick that up. And then I'm just picking them up together like so. If you don't have a pair of reverse tweezers, I would highly recommend them. I think they are like having a third hand. So I know that this is gonna go, keep it in the diamond orientation. You'll be a lot happier, I promise. And adhere that like so, and then adhere this daisy right in the middle. Okay, and then that can set there for a second while we do the same on this one. Okay, pick them up together, put some liquid glue on the back and keep it in the diamond orientation. We're gonna put that out to the other side like so. Do you have to change the sides? No, you can do them however you want. Okay, and then we'll do that like so. Here we go. I'm so glad to use this DS Mitchell. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. I have a whole bunch of that. Paul Revere and the Raider song Kicks is about drugs. Oh, yeah, they probably would. I, I wasn't... I mean, you might be surprised to know I wasn't a druggie. I didn't even try them ever. I've never even tried a cigarette. I know, I know. A little bit like a teacher's pet goody two-shoes, I know. But it's true. There we go. Okay, so those were my colored um, opal rounds. And it's kind of fun to remember that you can color these with Stampin' Blend, so you can make them whatever color you like. Now we'll go ahead and put these on our card front. And really all I'm doing is kind of lining those points up with the edge of the cardstock. Okay. Now, here's the trick. You only want to put glue on this half of the square. So if you hold it with one side, flip it over the opposite of the square is where you want to put the glue. Okay. If you're not entirely sure, double check it. It will mess up everything, I promise. And you'll be very sad and be like, dang it, Mary, why didn't you tell me to do it better? You should have told me better. And give that a little press. And then we're gonna do the same here, like so. Okay, so again, I'm holding it with the opposite of the glue side. Did you like that grammar? the opposite of the glue side, what? And you can short it a little bit. I'm not going all the way to the to the center because it's gonna squish and I really didn't want it to squish everywhere. 
and potentially ruin my popability. Except, I, well, that's okay. You saw what I did there, right? Did you see what I did? Did you see that I have kind of messed up what I had, my plan, my big plan? Yeah, I did. If you see it, give me a thumbs up. It's okay. Life happens. It's a card. It's my card. Nobody will know but me and you guys. Okay. <laughs> hey, Karen. All right. One last thing to do, and then we'll decorate our envelope. We're going to adhere Miss Bumblebee. Actually, I suppose technically, biologically speaking, it's a he, Bumblebee, a hebe. It's a hebe. I think these guys are hebes. This doesn't look like a queen. Beautiful, but not a queen. We're going to put her like that. You don't want her wings to interfere with the uppy downy part of the card. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of dimensionales on the back of this little bee person. Bee ladies. And we'll, I'm going to close the card so that I make sure I know where everything is. And we'll get her adhered. Okay. Like that. All right. And that is the card. Just like so. And it's nice because it even sets up straight. And it's really cute, open and closed. I really kind of love this card. All right, okay, one more thing. We'll do our, uh, we'll decorate an envelope. If I can find my envelope that I know is here somewhere. I know it is. Wait just a minute. It's here somewhere. Oh, there it is. I see it now. I see it. Don't worry. I see it. I see it. Okay, I have a very vanilla envelope. And what I did is I took the congratulations from Happy and Heartfelt. And I'm going to just stamp it around the front. Hebe's give me jeebies. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Now I'm just going to do a quick double check. It's not that critical because I'm really not going to do anything straight here. But, you know, it's good habit. It's good habit. We're just going to kind of randomly... Let me see if I can fix that. I don't like it. If I can't fix it, I'm getting another one out. Hang on. Hang on. <clears throat> yeah, see, this is where it would be nice if I, if I did calligraphy and stuff. Yeah, I don't like it. It's gone. It's out. It's dead to me. Let me get another one. See, I, my theory is, is there's some things that you could blame on the on the post office, and there's some things you can't. And they would never smear, uh, un, they would never badly stamp their, the sentiment, right? Okay. So we're going to try that again, as if it had never happened in the first place. I was getting a little too jiggy. Uh, actually, you know what happened? This is what happened. I will explain it right now. I was pulling the stamp, and I don't know why, but I think I had decided I was worried about where I was putting it, and so I didn't stick it down. Like, I changed my mind halfway through, and that was dumb. I didn't need to do that. There we go. There we go. That's what I wanted it to look like. <clears throat> All righty, and for our final act of the day, we will put some more of this DSP on the envelope flap. And we'll be done ske. Done ske, done ske. All right, guys, you know, um, celebration is getting close to being over. This is still a great time to join. I've been having to make cards like crazy for new team members, and I have got more cards to send. So if you'd like to join my team, I would be tickled to death to have you. Get two free stamp sets in addition to your starter kit for $99 with free shipping. 
And it's uh, that's a pretty good deal. And I mean, like, any two stamp sets. Okay, you can't get celebration ones, but why would you want to get a free stamp set anyway? I don't know. And you can't get host sets. But anything else is fair game in any active catalog. So this is a great time. Give me a holler if you want to talk about being a demonstrator, whether for a business or because you love getting a discount. All right, and there you go. Little bumblebee that was used to started its life as a ladybug and became a bumblebee. And then we have some daisies, a little heart felt, heart and uh, happy and heartfelt, and some beautiful, wonderful, amazing daffodil afternoon DSP. All right, guys, appreciate you. I will see you on Saturday night for a Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Eastern. See y'all later. Have a great week. Thanks for spending part of your week with me.